So here's what I put in this article for Sports Illustrated that has now gone viral. Uh, I just got an email or a text from a buddy of mine. The Bongino Report actually put this up as well. So thank you. According to CDC, only 6% of deaths can be directly tied to having died from COVID as opposed to with COVID, meaning 94% of those who have sadly perished had other pre-existing comorbidities that could have led to their deaths. Given the age and prime health of college football players, this is a key data point. That's why I led with it. How many college football players have a pre-existing comorbidity? Now, there are some. The quarterback at TCU, Max Dugan, uh, or Duggan, who's from Iowa, actually. It was because of the testing they have done with COVID and then the attention to cardiac um, uh, uh, inflammation as a result of a viral outbreak that they did find in a previously unidentified pre-existing condition with him that left untreated could have been a serious problem with his heart. And now because of this, they're going to spend the year treating it. Hopefully he can return to playing football again next year. All right, so there, there will be some, but by and large, how many 20-year-old football players have a pre-existing comorbidity? Number's going to yeah. be really low, guys. That's why the Max Duggan news at TCU made national news, because it's not often you find a pre-existing, uh, morbid, comorbid, uh, uh, a pre-existing morbidity with a college football player. There was one at another school. I think it was um, one of the group of five schools. I can't remember now. And he thanked the school. And said, hey, thankfully you guys were testing for this and found it. Otherwise, I'd have never known about this. So thank you. And this, these pre-existing, it's not like it's unheard of, but it's extremely rare. Like I can think of maybe one or two Hawkeye football players in my life who yeah. just stopped playing because they found they had an issue with their heart. And they're like, you know what? The chances of me get making it at the next level are pretty slim anyway. So I'm just right, right. going to hang it up. Next data point, according to CDC, confirmed hospitalizations for COVID nationwide are now at their lowest total since March 21st. And of course, because I'm writing for Sports Illustrated, that isn't exactly a right wing publication. I'm going to make sure I'm citing all of this data. And and if I wrote this for the blaze, I'd have to cite a point like that for anybody. OK, but given Sports Illustrated's political bent, which is fine, it's there. They can have any political bent they want. I'm, I believe in freedom. But I understood what that they were going to be very skeptical of me just stating these things. So all of this in the article is exceedingly documented. OK, um, only two point nine percent. Look at this stat. Only two point nine percent of the available hospital beds in the Big Ten footprint are currently being used for COVID patients. Think about that. The curve is flattened. That's an amazing number. How did I get it? Uh, I, I, I went to the Beckett Healthcare Report, which has been stratifying this from the COVID tracking project. How many hospital beds and how many total hospital beds there are in each state and how many in each state are being currently occupied for COVID patients. So that's where I got that number from. According to CDC, only 1.9% of ER visits nationwide are for COVID-like symptoms, which means 98.1% of Americans are going to the ER for something other than coronavirus. According to the latest active case numbers, only 0.26% of people living in the Big Ten footprint are an active confirmed case of coronavirus. This did not include yep. the testing. I, I left that out of this. All right, so I'm not including the New York Times study on our our testing flaws. I'm going by the I'm taking the testing numbers at face value. How did I get this? I went to Worldometer, which tracks this all in real time, and I went state by state. How many active cases were in each state in the Big Ten footprint? And then I divided it by about the 85.2 million people that live in the Big Ten footprint. And if you divide it by 85.2 million, you come up with 0.26% of people in the Big Ten footprint, even with us exaggerating now our positive test cases by anywhere from 40 to 90 percent, only 0.26 percent of people in the Big Ten footprint are currently an active case for coronavirus. According to CDC, since March, only 1.5 percent of deaths to those aged 15 to 24 have been with COVID. 1.5 percent since the beginning of the pandemic. That's it. According to CDC, 15 to 24-year-olds represent 12.9% of the U.S. population, but just 0.2% of all COVID deaths. 
I talked about the NFL, which has completed now has completed training camps and is getting ready for the season. Right now, one player is on the NFL COVID reserve test or list. One player out of 2,560 players. One is on the confirmed, set apart, quarantined COVID reserved list. But they're in a bubble, One. though, right? They're not. They're they're mm. they're not in a singular bubble. Each team is practicing at its own facility, but then the players go to a hotel or home that night, depending on that team's procedures. They're all contact traced. They all have their temperatures checked when they come into the facility every day. But they are not in a singular bubble like what's going on in the NHL, where they're all is it in Edmonton, I think it is, and another location. And then in the NBA, they're all in Orlando. They're not in a singular bubble. They're doing it the Sweden way. Yeah. And it's that's a proof of concept that can be emulated in a college setting as well. Uh, a leading cardiologist at the University of Michigan doesn't believe myocarditis, the heart inflammation, is enough of a concern to justify canceling football. A top genetic cardiologist at the prestigious Mayo Clinic has said the same. And so if the Big Ten, it, it leaked to some of its people in the media, Nicole Auerbach at The Athletic is basically, and she's a Michigan grad and a good college football reporter and nice on TV, but she essentially is a stenographer for the Big Ten. That's essentially what she is. And she's not alone, guys. There's all kinds of people in the media, right and left, that are stenographers for their sources. The Big Ten is one of her main sources. That's why she's on the Big Ten Network. When Nicole Auerbach has a breaking news story from the Big Ten, it's basically the Big Ten gave her the story, okay? And the Big Ten gave her the story that they were seeing an alarming amount of myocarditis cases from players, anywhere from 10 to 15, already in just the preliminary workouts they were doing. Well, as I point out in the Sports Illustrated article I wrote, why are they still letting those workouts go on then? Every school in the Big Ten is still doing these workouts, practicing every day. If you were seeing myocarditis flare-ups from these workouts, so you shut the season down, then why did you let these workouts go on? Why didn't you shut all the workouts down then, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you want them to do that if they were seeing something like this? Yes. If that was your kid, wouldn't you be like, hey, shut them all down? Yeah. Then why is my kid still practicing then? What's, what sense does that make? Answer, none. <clears throat> There have been three major testing innovations just since the Big Ten made its announcement, all with saliva-based tests. The University of Illinois, the NBA Players Association one through Yale University that costs just $4 a sample. Abbott Labs just announced one that they can sell to the public that is a self-contained one for just $5 a unit. So that was one of the main objections the Big Ten listed was a lack of affordable, accurate testing. These are all emergency-approved, FDA-approved Tests right out of their own footprint, one of them is. So that objection's been answered. So here's my question. Given how densely populated the Big Ten region is, 85.2 million people live in this region. How could we possibly get these numbers any lower without a meaningful vaccine? Not some Theraflu or a seasonal shot. A meaningful vaccine. And without that or natural herd immunity, if we're not gonna if we're gonna pretend that, that doesn't exist, Sweden then how do we get these numbers any lower? When is it safe to play then? How could these numbers be any lower without those two things among 85 million people? 